Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Evening Show right here on Smash FM here on a lockdown Friday here in Melbourne. Of course, uh, let's go to our friends over in the US and go to uh, Minnesota in particular. And of course, uh, speak to a music artist, one of the best artists that we've had on the show. Of course, her name is Darren Lee. She joins us right now. Thanks to Darren for joining us. Thank you for having me. You are so sweet. What's been happening around the world, especially uh, over there in the US. Uh, why have you been right. doing sort of a uh, keep going the music side of things? I've been doing a lot of Zoom writes actually with some of my friends. We'll hop on Zoom and do some writing, some co writing. And honestly, I feel like I'm with a lot of people with doing a lot of home projects, done a lot of those, and uh, just writing a lot and keeping the business going. I just, I released Wherever I Go a couple months ago, and now we're gearing up for the next release. Uh, normally, I'm assuming during the, the summer uh, that uh, obviously you'd be right. normally out on the road, obviously touring or doing some performances. How difficult has that been to sort of been restricted to, I guess, do other virtual performances or, or hopefully some live performances? Yes, I've been lucky enough to be able to do a few live shows. Um, I think I have about two left for the summer, which is so strange at this point in the year. Normally it's three to five shows a week and you're on the road all the time. And it's been really strange and wild to be home this long. I think it's the longest I've been home since I graduated from high school three years ago. So it's, it's been very different, but like I said, I've been lucky to be able to play a few live shows, which has been nice. And everybody's doing their social distancing and doing their part, which has been really, really awesome to see. And the lives are fun. It's definitely different. It's it's strange to go from the transition from a live and then a show because you kind of have to remind yourself that now it's in front of a real audience and a live audience and now it's in front of your phone. So it, it's funny, but it's interesting. Now, obviously, there in um, Minnesota, uh, especially what's been happening this year, uh, I guess it's completely <laughs> had everything this year. You mentioned that you've had a chance to do some live performances as well. Um, I guess how special has that been to do a couple of those live performances and where have you been doing those live performances? Yes, it's been really cool, especially through this time, like you said, where we aren't doing shows like that. And to be able to find venues and audiences that are willing to do it, but also willing to keep each other safe and take consideration of one another, which I think is so, so key right now to put on a safe show or a show that you can feel comfortable at. And I've done a few or one at Ernie's and then I was actually a guest to Doug Allen Nash, who does a Johnny Cash Neil Diamond tribute. He had me playing June Carter a few times, which is so fun because I love them. And then I've done a few shows, just kind of, I did one, there's only one state or one fair in the state of Minnesota this summer in a county. And I was actually the only performer at a fair this summer in Minnesota, which was pretty crazy, but everybody was socially distanced and doing their part. So it was really cool to be able to do do something uh, live and kind of give back to people a bit. Now, do you have any live performances coming up anytime in the next couple months? Yes, I have actually next weekend, I'm opening up for Jared Neiman um, down in Grand Forks, North Dakota, and they're capping that one off again, all the COVID regulations and everything. So I'm really looking forward to that. That one is one that I've been looking forward to all summer. Now, I'm sure you've done some virtual performances, as you, as you mentioned before. How difficult was, was that at the start? And have you now got used to doing that? It was interesting because with <laughs> like technology can sometimes really bring you for loops and you hit waves. And sometimes you're just kind of out in the middle of the ocean, not sure what's happening. And so I've kind of got the thing down. I got the lights and the mic and I've started to really get everything down. So definitely at first it was a learning curve trying to figure out what's best for going live and things like that. But I feel like I kind of have it down now, but it's always been fun. I've been, I've had really cool audiences on lives that have been really interactive. They comment a lot. There's always hearts and likes popping up and whatever. So it makes it fun. To you know, hopefully next year where everything hopefully calms down a bit. Right. <laughs> um, I guess the what you mentioned that normally you do five shows a week. Um, is that something you're hoping to get back into in 2021? 
I'm hoping to. I know that with everything going on, and it'll probably be a bit different. So I kind of I'm learning to adjust my expectations, I guess you could say. So just knowing, and I'm really comfortable right now with just saying any show that we're willing to kind of figure something out where we can keep people as safe as we can is something that I am happy to be a part of. So really any show right now I'm happy to have. Oh, so the music city is in Nashville, uh, down in the south yes. in, in Tennessee. Have you ever performed down in the music city? Yes, I have. I've performed at the Dog House uh, twice with full band. And then I've done a writer's round the first time I went to Nashville about two and a half years ago. I was lucky to get a writer's round. And then I played at another spot downtown during CRS, which is Country Radio Seminar. So that was super cool. And how special was that to uh, perform in Music City? Oh, it's like, I don't, it's almost undescribable because it's something where you know that you got to come in with your game face on and like ready to roll, but the audiences are so much fun. And they're like truly toned in on you and, and paying attention and everything, which makes it even more fun because you feel like they're there to listen to you as well. And it's, it's humbling and it's an honor too, because you know the people that are in that city and the talent that's there. So pressure's on, but it is so much fun. It is such a music city where you can't help but have fun. Now, I know that uh, different music uh, from the north and the south uh, of the country, um, I guess... For everyone here in Australia, I have no idea the differences. What are the differences between the south of the country to the north of the country where you are? Oh, man. Um, in music, it's funny because I've always felt like Minnesota, and especially the Midwest, is a really big country fan base. Um, and I'm not sure if you'd normally think that coming in. <laughs> when you see Minnesota, you'd see lots of snow and snow cats or snowmobiles. Everybody calls them something different, which is kind of funny. but. I, it's very much country music 100% here in Minnesota, which is really cool because I know in many other places, maybe it isn't that way, but it is really, really fun because it's kind of like down by the Minneapolis area. We have our almost a little version of Nashville down there, which is really fun. Now let's uh, talk a bit about uh, your music journey. How did you get involved um, in music and why did you choose it? I got involved in music at a really young age, actually, I've always been someone that was able to fall back on music no matter what it was. In elementary school, I struggled a little bit and I would learn, I'd make up my own songs, like writing my own song to remember my spelling words or math equations, whatever it might have been. And when I was 14 was when I really kind of took the solo thing on a ride and did my first competition and started getting into music and really gigs and everything else just kind of started lining up after that and I've been doing it ever since. Is there a particular highlight for your music journey that you'd like to share with us? CRS I got to meet with the kids from Children's Miracle Network uh, which was so much fun. I could have sat in that room all day with those kids and just hung out. We made TikToks and had all sorts of fun and we we're just hanging out which was so much fun. I've never felt as like a 21 year old so old when these kids are like doing these TikToks and they have it down like they know this stuff and I was like I I don't I don't know this stuff so they had to teach me all of it they showed me the ropes they showed me the ways and it's those little things that like you don't realize you're gonna walk into and just like have a blast but that was one of them for me and really just seeing the emotional connection that people can make through music is something that I love. I have actually been to Minnesota myself uh, to Minneapolis. Really? In St. Paul, I have a couple of years ago. That's awesome. Now, my question to you is, now, I know that uh, Minnesota originally had a Super Bowl um, about two years ago. Yes. Uh, and obviously, uh, um, is that something you want to do? Like maybe perform the national anthem at the U.S. Bank Stadium? That would be so cool. I do it the national anthem around i've done a lot of hockey games actually i've sang the national anthem which it it never it's always something that you don't go into i think doing music expecting to be asked to sing the national anthem because that is such an honor because it means so much and whenever i'm asked it's the one thing that i get the most nervous for actually is singing the national anthem 
especially on ice because I really don't want to fall because <laughs> it just wouldn't be a good look. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know, uh, obviously, I've been to the Target Center. I'm sure that's where the ice hockey is. So cool. Um, in downtown Minneapolis. Uh, and I have to ask this question. Listen to the National Anthem and uh, got involved in it uh, in regards to singing with the, with the crowd. For you as a performer in front of millions or thousands of fans at the Target Center, I guess, do you get chills down your spine and um, through your body when you perform the National Anthem? Always, always. It's the, it's always, my thing is I like to hear the note right away just because it's something, like I said, I don't want to mess it up. And it's right as soon as I start singing, I'm like, whoa, I'm doing this. Like, I'm right here singing this song. That means so much to everybody and so many people have stood on the line for and sacrificed for. And it's just, it is, it is really humbling. And like, it chills, absolutely. What does the music industry mean to you now? Oh, man. The music industry, to me, is, I never really knew what to think about it going in, because it kind of is a scary thing. Like, you don't really know if you understand it right, and, and you want to meet the right people and make the right connections and everything, and I've been really blessed to meet some great people that have taken me on and, and have worked with me and helped me find the ropes and do everything, and really, for me, the music industry is such a family when it comes down to it. You know, everybody knows one another in some way, shape, or form they've met done something together sometimes so it's definitely a family do you have any short or long-term um, goals or ambitions in music yes um i would love to have an album recorded within the next two years is kind of something that i have um i've done an ep and lots of singles but i feel like an album was just such a storybook that'd be so cool to put out and my all-time biggest dream and goal in music is to one day be invited to sing at the Grand Old Opry. I'm one of many, I'm sure, that have that dream, but that's like always been my my holy grail sort of thing. Now, do you have any country music artists uh, that you look up to? Oh yeah, I love Shania Twain. She's I grew up with her. One of my faves, Johnny Cash as well. Um, Maren Morris, Casey Musgraves, all of them. But Shania Twain and Johnny Cash are like my my all times. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever met Shania Twain? No, I haven't. And she's from Canada, so I'm really close to the Canadian border here. So I'm hoping one day I can go up to Canada and do something. And maybe maybe she'll do like a hometown show, and maybe I could like open for her hometown show. That would be super cool. Bring <laughs> it into existence. <laughs> <laughs> what would be the first question you would ask her oh man honestly if I could spit out a question between like probably being <laughs> fangirling I don't know if I've ever fangirled in my life but I feel like that would be my time to just hardcore fangirl um honestly I think I might just ask what maybe not what the best piece of advice they've receive themselves what the best piece of advice they could give to someone who's like coming after them in an industry ridden ridden the wave on and have experienced just maybe the best piece of advice that they would have for someone or something that they wish they knew going in I guess something like that if I could get it out <laughs> <laughs> now of course uh, I have to ask this question I do this to all the U.S. artists that we have on the show and that is for our Australian listeners in particular, they are dying to know, when are you going to come out to the land down under? Oh my gosh, I would love to come out there as soon as I possibly can. So hopefully as soon as everything's kind of settled down and it's safe for everyone, I would love nothing more than to come and visit. I've never been, so I'm really excited to someday come. Uh, and... I guess, what would be your advice to our listeners out there that should get involved in music? Ooh, I would say life is really short. So it's important to take the moments that you get and just own them. And if you want music or even if you just want anything in life, just to go after it. Go after it wholeheartedly and really just shoot for those stars because you never know, never know where you'll end up. 
Now let's uh, finish off with a couple of lighthearted questions. So I know you got a guitar in front of you, so I'm just, we're going to get you to perform <laughs> one of your music very shortly, uh, awesome. which is uh, any embarrassing moments on stage? <laughs> um, oh, man. I've had a few times where I've nearly fallen and caught in myself, which was really good because I didn't want to fall. Uh, the amount of times that I've nailed my mouth on my mic, you would think after so many years of singing, I wouldn't do that, but I still do. There is so many random things. I'll sometimes I'll even forget the name of my own song and I'll stand there like, <laughs> I'm going to sing my song and it's called, Oh man. <laughs> Somewhere in between those. <laughs> oh, um, now, following up from that, um, have you ever forgot a lyrics to your own song? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but the nice thing is, hopefully, if it's something that people haven't heard, then they have no idea that you messed it up. But most of the time, it's like songs that I should know. And I'll just be standing there and I'm like, oh, boy, I don't remember this part. So I just kind of play more guitar. <laughs> Oh, now, of course, uh, have you ever, when you go out to do um, on tour and, uh, of course, doing live performances, and when you go to different towns and all that, I guess, do, do you ever forget which town you're performing at when you introduce yourself? <laughs> yep. <laughs> My trick is always, I whenever I'm in that moment and I can't remember where I'm exactly at, I just scan for the nearest like sign, business sign, anything. And I just hope that I like pronounce it right, I guess. And basically, yeah, I'm just like praying in my head that there's a sign that says where I'm at within like my view site. <laughs> Have you ever got caught out in regards to like, you couldn't find anything that was going to help you out? Yes, actually. And I've just, I, I, sometimes you just have to be quick on your toes, which I have three older brothers. So I feel like I grew up having to be quick on my toes and I've normally been able to come up with something like thank y'all for having me here at this beautiful location <laughs> instead of what I meant to say <laughs> we try <laughs> oh, you get and do you get ever have any really strange song requests by anyone oh man I I don't know if I'd say strange I'm, I'm sure I have. There's sometimes where I get ones that I don't know, but the most common one that somebody always shouts out at every show is Freebird. And I feel like I always just have the same reaction of like, great song, but I can't play it. <laughs> oh, and of course, for anyone that should follow you on social media and for the music channels, how can I go about it? Yes, you can find me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok even, um, my website's darianlee.com, and all of my social socials are just at Darian Lee. And you, you mentioned about TikTok, and you mentioned about it twice already during this uh, interview, which is, uh, what's the best one that you've ever done on TikTok? Oh, I've, I feel like I need to be better at making more TikToks. I was actually just on talking to another uh, lady and she was telling me that I hadn't made one since July 5th. So I was like, oh boy, I should probably make more. But um, I did a cover of a song called Holy Spirit and that one got like 20, 20 point something thousand views, which was really wild um, and super cool because I filmed the cover of it out at uh, a family church out in the country here where I'm from, which was super cool. Cause that room just has like the most beautiful acoustics and it just bounces off the wall in the most beautiful way. And so it was kind of special that that was the one that did something. So we can't let you go. I mentioned before you got a guitar in front of you. Um, so you might as well play us a, a song um, for us. Yes, I will. Um, I'm gonna do my single that is currently out called Wherever I Go. Uh, it's written by Emily Fortney and Sky Claire. They wrote this one specifically for me, which is so crazy. Um, and there's also a music video, and I got to drive a really cool orange Mustang. So if you haven't checked it out, you definitely should. <laughs> Feels like this. Ooh. 
looking for me. I'm probably driving around with the top down Pretending I'm in this video Oh, got all the right news Feeling that song good I'm not afraid to break it down I'm singing along I know every note The drum beat, my heart beat That old school flow No way Amazing, absolutely amazing, Thank you. Uh, well, Thank you so much. <laughs> no worries. And, you know, uh, I guess to finish off, I have to ask, uh, and you mentioned it just before you perform, how can everyone uh, get that song uh, again? And, of course, you might as well tell us the background behind it. Yes, that song, like I said, was written by Emily Fortney and Sky Claire. It was actually the first song, or is the first song, that I've ever recorded and released that I personally didn't write on, which is kind of cool because you get to put a little bit of your soul in a song that other people have written so much of their heart into. And it's really humbling to be able to write or sing a song that somebody else wrote for you, which I never thought I would ever do. So it's pretty crazy and cool. Uh, but yeah, that song is, I feel like everybody can relate to it. I found out since releasing it, that a lot of people pretend they're in a music video while they're driving around and jamming out to their favorite song, but we don't talk to other people about it. Like we don't experience our music videos with other people. So now everybody's experiencing it together, which I think is super cool. You can find it all over Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, um, Pandora, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Google Play Music, all of the music things, YouTube as well, at Darian Lee. You can just look up Darian Lee or wherever I go and all of my music will pop up then. Well, Darren Lee, thank you so much for joining us. It's awesome having you on the show. I will definitely love to, uh, uh, once this is all comes uh, comes down, uh, hopefully come back to Minnesota. I love the state of Minnesota. And, yes. uh, and hopefully uh, get a catch up with you in person. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and hopefully you can come down to Australia as well, especially to Melbourne and uh, um, show you case your music down here. Absolutely, yes. Definitely come to Minnesota. I can show you some cool places around here. And when I come down there, I'll be sure to hit you up. We can do the same. I would thank you again for having me. This has been so much fun.
No worries. And that's uh, Darren Lee there, of course, uh, from Minnesota. Of course, one of our favourite uh, music artists, of course. Uh, <laughs> of course, you can follow her on the socials as well as the music channels. We'll put all the details up on our uh, website and, of course, our social media uh, in the coming days. There's more on the Smash Evening Show right after this. Don't go away here on the Friday Lockdown Edition. <laughs> 